evening and welcome to our new moon of the third Hebrew month, Shabbat. Yeah. We're glad to be a part of this gathering tonight and we're celebrating this time as and we're going to count the Omer as well. Yeah. Today is 45 of the Omer, so let's do the Omer together. Baruch Blessed are you, Lord, our God, King of the universe, who has sanctified us with his commandments and commanded us to count the Omer. Today is day 45 of the Omer. May the merciful one restore the holy temple to its place speedily in our days. I thank you for Yeshua, my bread from heaven. Amen. So as we start this new Hebrew month, we know that you're Pastor Lisa amazing teaching tonight and we're looking forward to it so i just hope you receive we pray by the ruach of kadesh that you yes. receive what god has for you this month and we step mm. into this time because we know this is a time of mm. elevation and spiritual growth as we moving closer yeah. to to that special day of shavuot you know the fourth Amen. day so Amen. i'm gonna turn it over to you baby and uh, anytime you want me to okay. share I, i'll be willing Okay, well, this, like you said, it's the third Hebrew month, and it's a season mm. of revelation, wow. primarily mm. referring to the revelation of the Torah, of course, that was given on Mount Sinai. Mm -hmm. So this month, we need to ask the Holy Spirit to release fresh revelation, especially as we're reading the word, as mm. we're reading the Torah portions. If you're a person who you're reading the Torah portions every week, before you read it, you need to pray and say, Lord, give me a fresh revelation mm. because this is the month yes. that he wants to release revelation in our life. We know that the feast day, of course, is Shavuot <laughs> or Pentecost. This is coming up. We're actually going to be celebrating that next week. Um, and if you'd like to be a part of that, you can go on our Save the Nations page and you can see we're gonna be having a conference Thursday, Friday, and Saturday with an amazing woman, Halisa Elwine. We're so excited that she's going to be with us and you can register and come and she's going to really break open Shavuot to us. Mm -hmm. But during Savan, everybody saw the revelation on mm -hmm. Mount Sinai. Not one person, not just the elders, everyone saw the revelation. So what is that telling us? That means that we all yes. have the ability yes to receive revelation from God. Do we want it? Mm. Are we going to show up for it? Are we going to expect it? Are we yes. going to prepare ourselves for it? That is the key. So, um, and even the sounds, I wanted mm. to bring out that the people, even the sounds These, were elevated mm -hmm. to the level of seeing wow. because everyone saw the divine voice. That's so good. It's powerful. It kind of reminds me of the time before that, when Moses turned to see the voice. Yeah. And, you know, even in the book of Revelation, John turns, it says somehow there's an aspect of the voice yes. of God you can see. You know, yeah. maybe that even goes back to the Garden of Eden where Adam walked, you know, when mm -hmm. God would visit Adam and he says, you know, he heard the, the sound, Yeah. you know, of it, you know, and that goes back to his voice. Yeah. So we can expect to hear yeah. his voice. Yes. You need to tune your ears, mm. to, your spiritual ears to hear the voice yeah. of Adonai. Yeah. We, this month we knew it, expect to see the word. We expect mm. to hear it and we expect to see the word become alive in our lives. You know, we talk about this every week. As we're reading the Torah portion, we look for the Torah portion to be activated mm -hmm. in our life. Mm -hmm. And every single week, we see it activated True. in the world yeah. somewhere, yeah. either in the United States or another country. We can actually see, especially in Israel, we will see that word become alive. Why? Because the word of God is alive. It is quickening. It is moving. It is forever established. Mm -hmm. And so I think we need to expect to see it alive in our life, to see the revelation and to hear it as the heavens open, just like it did for Israel, you will receive mercy and grace to complete what Adonai is instructing you to do through his word. So not only are we going to see it, hear it, but also he wants to, um, for us to receive that mercy and grace mm -hmm. so that we can accomplish what he's showing. It's great to have revelation, but we want to have more than just seeing it and hearing it. We want it to operate in our lives. And this mm -hmm. is what God wants to do for us during this month. 
We know that Saban is a wedding month. Mm -hmm. Adam and I mm -hmm. married Israel in Mount Sinai, and you preach today in this um, Shabbat. If you want to know more about what um, happened and how God married Israel and what that covenant is all about, you need mm -hmm. to listen to mm -hmm. that sermon today. But what does Adonai do for his bride? That's what I'm going to talk about tonight. Ezekiel 16. Can you let's so read says, that? Now I passed by you again. I looked upon you. Behold, you were maturing at the time for love. And I spread my skirt over you and I covered your nakedness. Yes, I plighted my trough to you and entered into my covenant. Mm -hmm. says the Lord, and you became mine. I was, wa I, then I washed you with water. Yes, I thoroughly washed away your clinging blood from you, and I anointed you with oil. I clothed you also with embroidered cloth and shod you with fine seal leather. I gird you about with fine linen and covered you with silk. I decked you also with ornaments, and I put bracelets on your wrists, a chain on your neck. I put a ring on your nostril and earrings in your ears and a beautiful crown on your head. Thus you were decked with gold and silver and the raiment of your fine linen and silk and embroidered cloth. You ate fine flour and honey and oil. You were exceedingly beautiful and you prospered into that royal estate and your renown went forth among the nations for your beauty for it was perfect. Though my majesty and splendor which I had put upon you through, excuse me, through my majesty and splendor which I had put upon you says the Lord. That's a great scripture in Ezekiel 16. So what was what God did for Israel when we marry Yeshua, he mm -hmm. wants to do for us. But who does this remind mm -hmm. us of? It reminds us of the story <laughs> of Ruth, right? Which, which is traditionally read on Shavuot. Yes. Yeah. This wow. is the time you read the book of Ruth. And what? And Boaz, she asked Boaz, spread your wings, spread your skirt over me. You yes, know, yes. That's what God wants to do to us. Wow. He wants to spread that wow. skirt over us. And, and her cover. story is one of redemption, mm -hmm. one of blessing, and one of legacy. Mm -hmm. And I think we forget about that. This is is exactly what happens to us when we marry Yeshua and the feast day of Shavuot or Pentecost is when we renew mm -hmm. our marriage vows. And you so talked good. about that today. We will do and we will hear. We have to say I do again. Just yes, like did yes. In, at Sinai in the wilderness. So let's compare our marriage to Yeshua, to Ruth's marriage to Boaz. So number one, before Ruth ever gets married, she has to leave her homeland. And mm -hmm. let's look at what Corinthians, 2 Corinthians it says. It says 2 Corinthians 6, 17, therefore come out from among them. And be separate, says I don't know. I touch not the unclean thing, and I will take you in. That's good. So, how the only way that Ruth could even go into mm -hmm. Bethlehem is that she had to let go the of people. Moab. Wow. She had to let go of the culture. She had to let go of the ungodliness there. That was the only way that she could actually go into Bethlehem in in a way that God could redeem her. Right. Mm -hmm. We are, and we see here that we are to be committed, just like she was yeah. committed. We are to be committed to Yeshua. Matthew 22, 37. And he said, you shall love Adonai your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. And so we see that mm -hmm. the person that Ruth was first committed to was Naomi. Mm -hmm. Why? Because Naomi represented the covenant. Mm -hmm. And right, Naomi is a type and a shadow of the Holy yes. Spirit in our lives today. And Ruth, let's look what Ruth says to Naomi in Ruth 1.16. For where you go, I will go. And where you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people and your God, my God. Where you die, I will die. And there I will be buried. May I don't know, I deal with me. And worse, if anything but death comes between me and you. So you see mm -hmm. what she was saying, was, her commitment yeah, to Naomi. Strong it was high. a very yeah. strong one because she understood that she needed the only way that she was going to be able to be successful in Bethlehem is if she was connected to Naomi. And the only way that we are going to be successful and our marriage to Yeshua is going to be successful is if we remain committed to the Holy Spirit. Yeshua left this earth and he says, I do not leave you. I did not leave you comfortless. I leave you with my Holy Spirit, the teacher, the guide. Mm -hmm. So we have to remain with yeah. the Holy Spirit. And Ruth receives the redemption of the God of Abraham because she had embraced mm -hmm. Adonai. But how did she know to embrace 
It was through Naomi, Naomi's teaching and her marriage to Naomi's son that caused her to understand the covenant that was given uh, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob from Adonai. We also see that Ruth humbles herself. Now she humbles herself before Boaz. She lays down at his feet and waited for him to instruct her. So what is God saying to us? When we read the Torah, we need to not just read it, but we need to pray. We need to wait for the instruction. See, revelation is something that comes through a waiting time, through a preparation time. As you're if you have that heart of waiting to hear from Adonai, he will instruct, he will give it to you. And that's what Ruth had to do. She listened to the voice of Naomi, who said, lay down at his feet, wait for him to cover, mm -hmm. to cover you. What is the Holy Spirit will instruct us to do things, but we can't just jump up or we just can't move. We got to wait. We got to wait to get that instruction. Mm -hmm. And it's Almost like you need to wait to get the full instruction. Full instruction. You know, the, the steps, if you will. Yes. So we when she finally, she gets the instruction, when she marries Boaz, what happens? Just like we read in Ezekiel, she receives a great blessing mm -hmm. in her life. And when we marry Yeshua, we too receive great blessing. We receive great blessing spiritually, physically, and financially just like God did for Israel. Yeshua, will, when he, we marry him, he takes care of all of us. Mm -hmm. And I think we forget yeah, that. Yeah. I think that we miss out on that, that what is a husband? What does a husband do? Their responsibility is to take care. To nourish and cherish, you know, like Ephesians talks about. Yes. So, wow, that's really good stuff tonight. I love it. So not only does she receive the blessing, but we see that Ruth continues to have Naomi in her life. She didn't get redemption and her blessing and forget all about Naomi. She kept Naomi in her life. And so this is a warning. Many times mm -hmm. in our life, when God redeems us, when God blesses us, we get so caught up in the blessing that we forget mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. We, our relationship with the Holy Spirit Was, yeah, can weaken. Yeah. And when that happens, this causes great danger because we never obtain what Ruth obtains. Mm -hmm. See, when our relationship weakens with the Holy Spirit, then we never obtain legacy. But because Ruth kept that relationship with Naomi, God could entrust her with legacy. And that's what God wants to do in our life. He wants to redeem us. He wants to bless us, but he wants to produce a legacy in our life. For we And not only did Ruth understand this, but Boaz understood this. Notice that when Boaz marries Ruth, he marries Naomi. He understands that when he's taken Ruth as his wife, that he is redeeming Ruth's deceased husband. He is going to have a child with Ruth, but this child is a redeeming, right? Yeah. Of of, Ruth's deceased husband. What am I trying to it's say? An honoring, it was an honoring, and, and it's almost a fire, almost the highest form of honor in the Bible because you're mm. honoring someone that couldn't, you know, they can't do anything. They're dead, right. but yet you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna um, help build up that legacy. Yes. So and so continue there, it. So there was an honoring. So Ruth continued. They're all of them. It seems like they're all walking in that honor. They're all walking. Ruth was honoring Naomi. Boaz was honoring Naomi and Ruth. Yes. And because of that, a great legacy was released. What happened? King David come He's from come, come yeah. out, out of the union between mm -hmm. Ruth and Boaz and Yeshua came out of this union. So what happens when we remain with the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. when he allows us to produce legacy? Our legacy is to win souls, to to carry out the message of the Torah. What happens? People's lives are changed. And when we honor, God knows he can entrust us with the legacy. Yeah, I heard so, a long time ago, I think, you know, many of you might have heard this statement, but but um, life flows through honor. And we see that life is flowing right now. It's flowing. Through this 
honoring of, of all those of those people. Wow, yeah. amazing, amazing. And if we want to be the bride of Messiah, we must be willing to do what Ruth did. God wants to bring us more than redemption, mm -hmm. more than blessing. He wants to produce that legacy yeah. of souls. So I want you just to grab hold of that this month. You're redeemed, you're blessed, mm -hmm. and you have a legacy. Mm -hmm. Your legacy, not only is your legacy in your natural yes. loins, yes. Mm -hmm. but there's a spiritual legacy that the father wants to carry out through all of us. Mm -hmm. He wants us to produce the souls. Now, Sivan is also the month of receiving boundaries. And Israel had to wait at the foot of the mountain. They had a boundary at Shavuot. They couldn't just mm -hmm. run up to the mountain. No, there was boundaries set for God to release his Torah, to release his presence. And then with the early believers, they had boundaries. They had to wait together to receive the promise of the Holy Spirit. The early congregation, once, once um, uh, after the book of, of Acts chapter 2, and Peter preaches to the lost house of Israel, and now the Gentiles are coming into this covenant, what happens? There's boundaries, boundaries set. Read the boundaries Acts in Acts 15. 15. Uh, 21, but to write to them to abstain from the contamination of idols, from sexual immorality, and from what is strangled and from blood. For Moses from ancient generations has been in, has, has had in every city those who proclaim him since he is read in all the synagogues every Shabbat. Wow. So we good. see the boundary here. God sets boundaries. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't realize you know, people, this. People don't like, but most the kids people, don't like it. Yeah. We as adults, sometimes we don't like, but boundaries are healthy. Yeah. We, we raised our daughter with understanding boundaries. Yes. And even in this walk with the Lord, I want you to understand most people think, oh, I've received Yeshua as my Lord and Savior. He covered everything. I can, I don't have any boundaries, but we see here mm -hmm. boundaries were set, right? For the and, early and believers. It's, it's for protection. It's because God loves you that he gives you those boundaries. If yes. We, there's, there's places that he wants us to be able to go and we can't go unless we're walking holy. Yes. You know, sometimes it's a, it's a holiness boundary and sometimes something's not holy. He says, no, that's not who you are. Yeah. You know, that's not what I have for you that you can't go there. And the early church, I want to bring out to you that what did they, they gave them these three things. And many people think, well, that's but, it, yeah. but no, as, as you read, they, Torah. they right. had to learn Torah. Why? Yeah. Because they said, since he, they're talking that, um, for Moses from the ancient generations has had in every city those who proclaim him since he is read in all the synagogues every Shabbat. What is what is the scripture telling us that the early believers honored Shabbat? Mm -hmm. They were in the temple. Even the nations. It's the nations. These are people from the nations coming in. And yet they're being assimilated into the congregation, into that teaching that yes. and Torah is a boundaries that has boundaries, you know, and you live if you come, if you do those boundaries. And if you don't do those boundaries, you get yourself, you know, in trouble. Yes. And we see that Ruth also, she was given boundaries. Mm -hmm. What were the boundaries? You must glean on the corner of the fields. So by obeying the blessing, right, by obeying, then the blessing was open to her. Mm -hmm from Adonai. Yeah. She was given, the first thing she was given was a seat at the table mm -hmm. with Boaz and his servants. It's almost like a prophecy of the, the wedding banquet. You know, it's yes. almost a prophecy of us sitting all together when Messiah comes and there's this great big banquet, Yes, you know, and that's the, and the, when you, when you, when God's beginning to work in you, he's saying, okay, I'm inviting you yeah. to be at that table. But, but only, you got to have your wedding garment on too. Yes, you, know, yes, you have to have your wedding garment. <laughs> and that you are, you have Which is to, his righteousness yeah. and, and, and his commandments. And you have to have these boundaries mm -hmm. or you're not going to have that's the good. seat at the table. Yeah, and we see here what happens. She gets a seat at the table. Then she gets handfuls yeah. on purpose. On yeah. purpose. Mm -hmm. You know, people want to cry out, Lord, give me handfuls. Give me blessing. Give me blessing. But are they willing to stay yes. within those boundaries yes. are they willing to have on their wedding garment yeah. and the and some people want to stop at handfuls on purpose when the god's best for her was not just a handfuls on purpose was what no. was going to happen after that exactly where she lay at his feet in humility and receive what yeah. what you know that covering divine covering that wedding 
Yeah, exactly. It's so powerful. Mm -hmm. And this is a process. I want you to realize it's a process. Just like when you're first married, it takes time to get to know each other mm -hmm. and work together. But you should reach a point in your relationship, right? <laughs> that you understand and you live in unity. Why? So that the blessing can flow. Ad and I wants to walk in unity and release the blessing. But when we fight against him, mm -hmm. like Israel did, and we choose to be selfish and forget there are two of us in this marriage. Mm -hmm. And that's when the blessing stops. Wow. There's two of us. There's Yeshua and there's us. There's two. So what happens when the enemy comes in? He wants us to be selfish. Mm -hmm. He wants you to think about yourself. Oh, it's me. Look what's happening to me. It's all about me. You know, there was this, that was a, mm -hmm. a big statement. You know, it's all about me for a long time. And that was a, a lie from the enemy. I, I want me time. Me and, time and, and me know, and everything about wasn't me. It about anything but that. And that was not, mm -hmm. you know, not that, not that God doesn't want to take care of you, but you can't have that as your focus. Right. And it's right. actually the, the more you don't focus on that, the more you do get, yeah. you know, your needs met though. But in a marriage, we understand mm -hmm. that we please, right? Each yeah. other. So we please the father. He pleases us. It's a give and a take. And I think we've lost that, that knowledge about the marriage to messiah the commitment and what he's done for us and what we will do for him he said if you love me you'll obey my commandments you'll keep my commandments that's a love relationship but the enemy doesn't want that he wants us to get away and, and walk away from that so we have to be aware this month of that mm -hmm. who we're married to who's your husband it's yeshua and stay connected, stay with that dwelling. He wants to dwell with you, stay in his presence. It's remember, it's Shavuot. It's about that revelation. It's about hearing his voice. It's about walking with him. It's about seeing him. Remember that so that you draw close to him. Savan also is the month of harvest and ripening of the grain. It's our reaping month. So if you've been a tither, if you've been a giver to the, the new moons and the, the first fruit offerings, I want to encourage you. This um, There's three times a year we give our first fruit. The first one was at Passover. What does that take care of? That takes care of the spring. This one at Shavuot is our second first fruit offering. What's it going to take care of? Mm -hmm. Our summer yes, months, yes, right? Yes. God's, what is he setting us up for? Prosperity, yes, for ripening. Yes. And then we're going to give again our first fruit in the fall at Sukkot. Okay. What's it going to take care of? <laughs> it's going to take care of our winter. <laughs> Amen. God knows he set all this up. Mm -hmm. He set up a financial plan for us if we'll just walk in this obedience. So this is a month of reaping. Expect to reap. Call in your harvest. Lord, I thank you for my harvest. I've sown mm -hmm. And now I'm going to receive and I thank you for it, Lord. But there's conditions, right? Remaining committed, remaining in his word, remaining in this obedience. If we want to have the full abundance. Oh, the tribe associated with this month is Zebulun. Mm -hmm. And his word means to dwell. Leah named him this because she said in Genesis 30, 20. Leah said, God has endowed me with a good marriage gift for my husband. Now he will dwell with me. Uh, that's powerful. And regard me as his wife in reality, because I have borne him six sons and she named him Zebulun dwelling. Dwelling. So we see here, marriage is mm -hmm. all about dwelling. Why Leah said, if I, now that I've given him the sixth son, he will dwell and with me. Leah longs for that. I want to be intimate with him. I want yes. him to be with me. I want him and, to be and, with me. With, and for us to be together. So that, that's a powerful metaphor, even in the name. You know, Zebulun, that, that Zebulun, the dwelling. Wow. So what is God, what is he saying? Lord? Didn't God say one time, I, I will dwell among them you know I will dwell among um, them. i mean actually that's i will dwell the, in you Mishkan. yeah yeah, well, yeah. yeshua in dwells them. in us we know that so there's a dwelling so we got to grapple what is god saying he wants to dwell yeah. there's wow. a dwelling this month um and we see here he was the sixth son the number of man mm -hmm. and that's why god wants to yeah. he's always wanted to dwell with man so from, from the, the very, garden yeah right from the very beginning that's what god promised god that. god walked in the garden with adam and eve until what happened can till mm -hmm. man became selfish mm -hmm. and he chose another wow he chose the serpent yeah he chose not to be married to the father 
And God, that's our warning. I'm telling you, there's a warning. We must choose mm -hmm. to be married, choose to yeah. dwell. And it's interesting that the words when Eve did that, she mm. took. She took. And it's like, I want it. I, she, it says, she does, I want it because it's. it looks like it's going to make me wise you know and all these yes. things it was delightful to her eyes so it was the very opposite of what really that marital yes. relationship yes. And, then, well, and right after that they're you know they're hiding they're hiding you know, they're yeah. hiding and they're trying to cover themselves which is and they're actually exiled which is exactly what yeah. happened to israel yeah. when they chose to be selfish so god's warning us don't be selfish this month and it's mm -hmm. no coincidence that zebulun is the tribe attached to this month because it's the business tribe. So all you business people, mm -hmm. you need to jump in on this. All you givers, all you people, your, and your love language is for, giving. For business people, what you have to understand that, yeah, God does want to take care of you, but give your business to God because yes. make him your partner because he really part of being a business person is you have a gift of giving on you exactly and, which and, yeah and, and and management to to be a blessing to others yeah let's read the blessing deuteronomy 33 of zebulon he said rejoice zebulon as you go forth you and you is yes in your tents you will summon peoples to the mountain and there offer righteous sacrifices for they will draw from the mm. abundance of the seas and from the hidden treasures of the sand. Wow. And that's your, that's your portion mm -hmm. right there of scripture. You need to say, Lord, I thank you that I am drawing from the abundance of the sea. Lord, you have hidden treasure in the sand. Mm -hmm. You know, he has that hidden treasure for us. We've got to, treasure we've got darkness, to grab but, hold yeah, of it. Hidden riches and hidden treasures. I love that. And we see here, just like you said, see Zebulun was a giver. The Bible talks about what is he? He because took care of his brother. To Issachar. Who yes. Is, uh, um, discerning and studying the Torah yeah. and uh, its understanding is Zebulun was the, the tribe that's financing yes. so they can to do the Torah study yeah. but they get the blessing of those who do the Torah study yes. and the Torah study people get the blessing of yeah, Zebulun. Work there, Zebulun. So it it's works really, together. Yeah, yeah. So if you're a, you've preached this uh, <laughs> many years ago or not many, but a few years ago, if you're a woodcutter, mm -hmm. you need to grab hold of the blessing of Zebulun, but yeah. you need to understand God's not just blessing you to make you rich, but he's blessing you so that you will bless others also. So don't forget that. And not only was Zebulun, as I was studying this, he wasn't just a businessman, but he was a, he was successful in war. And let's read First that. Chronicles 12, 33 of Zebulun, such as went forth to battle, expert in war with all instruments of war, 50,000, which would keep rank. And they were not of the double heart. Whoa, that's good. That's so, powerful. so what is God saying to us in the business people? He's saying, not only are you going to be wise in business, but I'm going to make you wise in spiritual warfare. Mm -hmm. You're going to be wise in the spiritual warfare. And you need to receive that. And look how he says you won't have a double heart. Yeah. You won't yeah. be divided. You know, you're yeah. going to be single minded to, to follow after God and, yeah. to, and you keep, it says you keep your ranks. I mean, you've got to, you stay in your lane and in your place yeah. and you work with, you know, yeah. the other tribes. So, wow, that's good stuff. So we understand that the enemy doesn't want Zebulun's blessed. Of course, we know that. And so he's going to try to attack mm -hmm. in the in areas of your business. And that is why you need to be skilled in prayer, mm -hmm. in spiritual warfare. You've got to pray over every business decision, even if it, mm -hmm. it could be the million dollar deal. Mm -hmm. I don't care. You pray first because the enemy could be tricking, could be deceiving. And so you get on your knees and you pray. Let's talk about Joshua. What happened when the Gibeonites came? Yeah. They came in with, they, they deceived. It right in the natural, but they, the Bible says that they didn't ask counsel of the Lord. Joshua and did they made not. covenant with the wrong, with people. God said, don't make a covenant with them, but it was too late. It was too late because when you make a covenant, yeah, you've got to live up to live it. Up and I'm going to tell you business people, when you enter into a business deal, you can't just walk away. You have to do it the right way. You have to close it out mm -hmm. the proper way. And that's why you need to pray before you make any decisions. And you also need the right alignments this month. You got to review your alignments, review, review who you are joined to, right? Like mm -hmm. we just talked about, yeah. you know, Joshua didn't review it and he got joined to the Gibeonites. Mm -hmm. So God wants you to review who am I aligning with? 
Why, why am I telling you this? Because this month in our Torah portions, we see that Aaron and Miriam got out of proper alignment. Listen, wow, that's so good. he's the priest. She's the prophetess. And if they, they can get out yes, of alignment, exactly. all of us can get out of alignment. You might say, not me. Well, you know what? Yeah, yes, you can. Comes before, you can't be arrogant and think, well, I'm, no. I know so much or, mm -mm. you know, I'm good. God's got me. Yeah, he does. But are you in alignment? Are you doing what you're supposed to do? Especially when you, this is like this season, especially the closer we get to Shavuot, oh, yeah. you know, the more things are beginning there's more in that ha in the atmosphere happening yeah and what happened is they challenged mm -hmm. moses authority so we have to be careful this month that we don't challenge god's authority we don't challenge his word the way mm -hmm. that eve did okay when when satan said did god really say okay what was he doing he was challenging god's authority mm -hmm. and what happened eve bought into it don't buy into the devil's trick this month. Mm -hmm. Don't buy into that because he's going to try to get you to challenge God's authority and challenge God's servants who he's placed over your life. You know, your, your pastors, your rabbis, he's going to try to get you to get out of alignment with mm -hmm. them because this is what happens when, when Miriam and Aaron allowed their nephesh or their mind and emotions to override the authority that God had put in place what broke out on mm -hmm. Miriam? Leprosy, uncleanness. Leprosy is an unclean manifestation. So when our mouths are unclean, when we speak unclean against God's authority, I'm, against yeah. um, his word, against his servants, we open ourselves up to spiritual leprosy and what does that do it blocks yeah. the blessing not only that it, he, it not only hinders your blessing but israel actually had could not move for seven days mm -hmm. while miriam was put out of the camp yeah you know and disciplined because god loved her yeah you know she could but, have died slowed down the movement of the whole camp Yes. And that's what happens when we step out of alignment. When you're a part of a tribe, don't step out of that alignment. When you step out of the alignment, it affects the whole tribe. And not only that, when you step out of alignment, your blessing is stopped. I don't think we realize this, but it's stopped. It's put on pause and it can actually be removed. So we need to be really, really careful about this. So we need to watch what comes out of our mouth, out of our mouth comes the abundance of our heart. What we're speaking from our mouth has already been established in our heart. So guard your heart this month. Don't let um, unforgiveness, don't let offense mm -hmm. get, get, start stewing in your heart because it first takes place in your heart. And then once it comes out of your mouth, it's too late. So we have to be really, really careful this month about that. What we say can move us closer and faster to the blessing or the reverse. It can make us step backward and actually be sat down. So we need, Miriam was sat it's down. It's like, I'm thinking about a baseball metaphor or whatever, mm -hmm. or a sports metaphor. Yeah, you're benched. You're benched. You know, yeah. Until you, you know, till you, till you get it right. Yeah. And remember, we talked about Ruth. It's about legacy. What was God doing? This was about the legacy of the children of Israel. So he had to discipline Marion. He had to sit her down. So why? For the sake of the entire nation of Israel, so that the blessing could continue to flow. Amen. So just like Zebulun, God puts Ruth in a highly successful man's field. So this month, we can expect God to give us favor and put us in a prosperous field that will, that will release the same favor that Boaz gave Ruth. Expect that this month. So get ready to move into a new field, maybe new clients, maybe a new business adventure, maybe a new job, new acquaintances. God's going to place us you know, he talks about this new opportunities, you know, opportunities. It's, it's like open doors, that open no doors. Shut, you know, he said, I get there's a wide door open for the yes. gospel even. Um, and yes, there's many adversaries, but the God's going to place you in a place where mm -hmm. there can, you can move forward. You can move forward yeah. when you're aligned properly. And God will release it too, because this is the month of the fourth feast is 
on Friday, Shavuot, and that the four number four means authority. So yeah. this is a month not only to guard yourself against speaking against authority, but also to step into your authority. authority. Amen. Yeah, because Matthew, you know, when Yeshua left and he's giving the Great Commission, what is he saying? He says, Go in my authority. Yes. You know, you gotta you gotta yes. walk in that authority that God gave you. And I think that's um part of this. Uh, what God wants to do in this season. Yes. Amen. So we see that, like you said earlier, another quality of Zebulun is that they were not double-minded. Mm. And let's read, what does James say James about says, that? Uh, James 1, 6 to 8, only it must be in faith that he asks mm. with no wavering, no hesitating, no doubting for the one who wavers, hesitates, doubts is like the bill billowing surge out of the sea that is blown hither and thither and tossed by the wind. Caught. But truly, let not such a person imagine that he will receive anything he asks for from the Lord. For being as he is, a man of two minds, mm -hmm. hesitating, he is unstable and unreliable and uncertain about everything he thinks, feels, and decides. Wow, that's a yeah. heavy, heavy, heavy scripture right there. So Zebulun was not double-minded. Yeah. He and we. Wow, can you imagine? You're praying, but because of that yeah. double heart, double mind. Mm -hmm. he is you can't receive you're, you can't you're not receive. in position to receive you're not going to be in faith exactly which when we pray we've got to know when we're talking to the lord about our businesses mm -hmm. when we're talking to the lord about blessing prosperity talking about to him about legacy we need to know the word we need to know the scriptures when we go in prayer so that we can bring this to the father and because the bible says remind me of my word remind me of my of my covenant when we remind it's him a, it's a it's a faith covenant it's a faith covenant you know, that's part of that marriage vow it's a it's it's faith. Yeah. it's emuna. it's steadfast it's it's staying yes you know, and trusting and that's part of that uh, faith walk and it doesn't mean that in your in our mind and our emotions we won't that, yeah, sometimes some, be like yeah. ah lord i don't know what you're doing but <laughs> out of our mouth we have to just keep speaking the word keep speaking the word keep speaking the word if you think it don't say it <laughs> yes just speak the word Put until those, you're those until imaginations under you know bring them into subjection yes until what until your mind lines up yeah. with the word of god but when we're not double-minded that's when we ask in faith we shall Hallelujah. receive that's, that's what he said here so we have to believe yes. um that what he promised in his word he will do yes, so when we go to warfare we need to first cover ourselves this is so important you know zebulun they they were men of war but what do we do when we go into we warfare on, prayer yeah, ephesians that, we, 6 we put on that whole armor of god so we can yes. stand in god's power we have to with that breastplate you know with the gird our loins girdle, yes our feet shod our helmet of salvation our you know our our our, our shield of faith you know and the sword of the spirit so all those those things we have to put on we have that, to put on the actually says put on so yes it's not like just a metaphor you need to put it on in prayer yes in prayer so that you can do proper warfare and we know that like you said we have been given authority through the name of yeshua he said it go in my name we don't go come in our own name we go under the name of yeshua so we've got to like you said take our authority this month don't be afraid of spiritual warfare people get all freaked out about that and they think they, they have like the to words. They get, yeah they get intimidated it's like they think it's something like a spooky thing but it's really not no. it's, a, it's a it's a it's a weapon of prayer it's a it's weapon of prayer in the spirit it's praying the word yes you know, it, and that's the next thing we got as business people You've got to pray in the spirit. You can't just say, Lord, what do I need to do? It looks good. I'm going to do it. No, you need because to pray in the spirit. It's a, it's a weapon of warfare. Yes. You know, you're praying in a language that only you and God can understand. Yes. And God's revealing mysteries. You're actually going to pray according to Romans. You're praying the, you're praying the perfect will of God when exactly. you pray in the spirit. Which that's causes why there's so you, many people yeah. have been, you know, they don't understand it. So they mm. just... And because you can't understand in your mind, it's not from your mind, it's from spirit. It says your mind's not fruitful. It's from spirit to spirit. Exactly. Which what praying in the spirit brings us into alignment, alignment, yes, alignment with the will of the father, not my will, mm -hmm. your will be done, your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. And we have to get that way mm -hmm. in our life, the will of the father. You know, when, when we're praying about things, I always say to the Lord, Lord, this is what I desire, but you know what, you. father, I know, you know, best, yes. 
even though I'm saying this is what I desire, you know what I desire even more than I know. So I trust you above even what I'm telling you. I present this to you, but Lord, I know that you're greater. You're more mighty. You're more loving. You're more kind. You're more merciful. And Lord, you'll give me more than I ask for. I know you will. And that's why I want to be in alignment with you and just make sure this month you're in that alignment. Another quality of Zebulun, which means dwelling, is he was he always showed up when he was called. Mm-hmm. He and he was always prepared to give. Prepared business people always be prepared to give. This is your gift. The gift of giving is your gift. You should never say, "Oh, I'm not ready." You're always prepared to give. You get that in your mind right now. I'm always prepared to give and God will supply what I need. He says that whatever gift that needs to be given, God said, I will supply it. I will give it to you so that you will be able. And he said, so you will, there's an abundance for every every good work. work. It's not even something you need to even pray about. No, it's like, there's an abundance for, you know, God Every said, good all, work. all grace abound to you. It's yes. the grace that's about you so that there will be an abundance. So if there's a need, if there's someone hurting, if there's someone, yeah. uh, the widow, the stranger, the orphan, the poor, it's a, it's a, it's a, um, a special offering for Shavuot or whatever it is, you will be able to help that project, yes. whatever that is. Yes. Um, and that's why the reason why God gives you those resources. Yes. Yes. You know? To do that. So we see when David was in Hebron mm-hmm. and he was getting, they were, the the judah was um anointing him as king zebulun brought food and Mm. cattle to david when hezekiah was calling for um the passover to be reinstalled again Mm -hmm. zebulun was there when deborah was calling to fight with barak to defeat sisera zebulun was there so we see he never he never got away from his name he was always dwelling dwelling, always dwelling always dwelling oh and what does the scripture say he who dwells in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the almighty amen so as we are people of dwelling we're abiding under his shadow under his wings. Also, the territory that Zebulun was given was Mount Tabor. And this was the territory, this is the mountain that's believed to have been the ascension. Um, I'm sorry, the mountain yeah, of transfiguration. Yeah, yeah. This is where which is a which Peter talks about a dwelling. He's talking about making, you know, those three tabernacles, you know. Yes. So that. Zebulun, the Mount that's Tabor, his mountain. that's, his, that's mountain. his mountain. And what it's does Peter say? Let's build, let's build let's right? So, so Moses, you can sleep in there, Elijah. And like, let's we all dwell, let him dwell oh, here, well, right? Yeah. So we see that it Zebulun constantly is living up to his name. Amen. How does this apply to us? This month, Adam and I wants to remind us who we are married to. We are married to him. He wants us to remember our boundaries. He wants to bless us spiritually with fresh revelation and release warfare skills to defeat the enemy. Financially, he wants to bless us and take care of us. As long as we remember, we must choose to dwell with him. We must align with his word and his servants, Mm -hmm. with his body. We must show up when he calls us like Zebulun did, Mm -hmm. be at the right place at the right time with the right people doing the right thing. He wants to dwell with us this month and release his Shekinah, his Shekinah, Mm -hmm. his glory over us. Why? because he wants us to produce legacy. Mm -hmm. The only way that we can truly Mm -hmm. produce the legacy, the way that Peter did in Acts chapter two, is we must experience the Shekinah, the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Now I wanna read this. This is from some Jewish writings that I thought was really cool. He says, at Sinai, a new chapter was opened in divine human relations as God and the people of Israel committed themselves to a miraculous relationship, a relationship that does not recognize the dictates of convention and normalcy. As Jews, we follow both cycles, straddling both worlds. On the one hand, even the most natural aspects of our lives are predicted upon the miraculous and are permeated with norm transcending vision. On the other hand, our most miraculous achievements are grounded in the natural reality for our mission in life can be achieved only by inhabited 
both worlds, only by being a part of the natural world and at the same time rising above it to transcend its structures and limitations. Our mission in life is to transform the very nature of reality. In the words of the Midrash, to build a dwelling for God in the lower realms. At Sinai, God gave these instructions. We are connected to the house of Israel and we are put in these two worlds also. Mm -hmm. And we are called to bring the two worlds together. Mm -hmm. We are a light to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. We are a light to the nations. They are our bread. They are our legacy. So we have to begin to let God dwell in us and we dwell with him and let him release all that he wants to release in this month, mm, in this third so, month. I think that's so good. I mean, and mm. We hope you receive that tonight and we yeah. want to pray for you because we believe God wants to continue the legacy yes. that he started with his people that and it's going to continue through you and i and i love that what you're reading and i guess it's probably from the, the mean, Hamash or yeah. Mirash, but um about how you live in both worlds you live in both and worlds. really both of them are miraculous sometimes you don't realize yeah. because god programmed this natural world in such a way with these cycles but they really are miracles all miracles. And, and um, he wants us to learn how to live in these this miraculous realm as a light, as a blessing to bring a legacy um, to the nations and to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, yes. the Jewish people to know their Messiah, to the sons of Ishmael who don't know about the, their, the God of their Abraham, father, Abraham. Yes. So um, all those things are possible. And he's wooing us now back to the mountain, um, to that place of revelation that you talked about and where we can draw close to him and renew our vows to him. And yeah. we can, we can be like now God's showing us through this month. Okay. Now be like, there's a blessing on Zebulon. Let's Blessing. embrace that right now as we pray. Amen. Father, we thank you for your Torah, for your word, for this new month of Sivan. I thank you that you brought us to this season, for this time, for, 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 uh, for a, such a time as this. Lord, we thank you for the blessing that was on Zebulon to, to be that, that person that provided uh, for Issachar, to provide it for the Torah study, the, the blessing of a business person that was on Zebulon, or that he could draw from the water, he could draw from the sand. The, and Lord, right now, I thank you that your, your people are beginning to draw um, from this natural realm and from the spiritual yes, realm yes. the abundance the prosperity to fund the good news to fund the 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 gospel the to bring the light of the gospel to the ends of the earth yes Lord, we believe you and we have Thank come you, in Lord. agreement lord for those who who perhaps um have, have been languishing for some reason for or maybe they, they they they've yielded to temptation and they've not taken their place in the ranks so lord teach us to be like zebulon to take our place and not be sidetracked and lord there might be people here and maybe you you've been double-minded maybe you've been wavering in your faith and wavering in in, in your walk and lord right now we repent of it we ask that you forgive us lord if we wavered in our walk in our faith if we've not kept our eyes on you if we've not been about your business if we've been selfish if we've been self-centered if we've not been joined together with our brother and sister if we've allowed our mouth uh, to say yeah. things that that we shouldn't have said we ask that for crop failure we yes, pray that you yes. forgive us lord for vows that yes, we made yes. for, or made promises we didn't keep yes, or lord, for, for, do, for speaking things that we should have never said for slandering for talking about our leadership for those in authority lord we repent of it god and father right now we ask that your blood cover us from head to toe you wash us and you cleanse us from all unrighteousness and by faith lord tonight we yes, stepped into this month yes this month of your authority we take our authority yes. in you and we thank you as we, we put on that whole armor of god yes. we put on the helmet of salvation we put on the breastplate right. of your righteousness yes. we put on we gird our, our loins with your truth, truth. yes we shot our, our feet, feet with, with your gospel yes. we hold up your shield, shield of faith, faith. and we take, take the, the your sword the sword of the spirit the word of god and we pray in the spirit and we pray in the natural and will we stand fast 
in our faith. And Lord, the prayers that we, we, we and the, the prayers that we prayed, according to the book of James, if we'll pray and believe, if we'll pray and will not waver, and we will trust you, yes. Lord, you promise in your word, if we ask anything according to your will, you hear us. And if you hear yes. us, we have, have those, those petitions. petitions. Lord, we thank you for answered prayers yes. in this season, for this month, supernatural, yes. Yes. Lord, uh, miracles taking place in the lives of your people to be about your business, but most of all, to bring a legacy, the legacy of Yeshua into the earth. Lord, we praise you. We honor you. We glorify yes, you Lord. right now. We thank you for this new month, this yes. third month, and we renew our, our vows. wedding vows yes, with you, you, just like Israel did on Sinai. And we say, we, say, we, we will, will do and, and we, we will hear. hear. And we yes. give you the worship and we give you the praise in Yeshua's mighty name. Amen. 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 Well, Amen. we hope you receive that word. We Amen. ask that you pray about giving a, a first a, a new moon offering. And um, you, you, we teach you at Save the Nations. Mm -hmm. If someone's been speaking into your life yeah. or the ministry's blessed you, um, you give a seat of honor and you let the yeah. Lord lead you about that. But you do it every month. Yeah. And um, and it, it's it's going to be a great blessing back to your life. Of course, you're going to be saying thank you. You're going to be saying, I appreciate yeah. what your that word or that, and your voice in my life. But that that blessing is going to uh, come back to yeah. you in, in many ways that we've seen in a personal yeah. way, so, especially this month, because it's a ripening. Amen. You get the double this month. Grab hold of it. Amen. Well, the Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you. The Lord lift his countenance. Be gracious to you and give you a shalom peace. We declare nothing missing, nothing broken, nothing lost, and all restored on this new month of Sivan, yes. the third Hebrew month. In Yeshua's mighty name, amen, amen. and amen.